what's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec. And last week on Twitch, we took a look at CrowdSec, which is like a fail to ban on steroids. The issue I have with fail to ban is it's all local. Like someone has to brute force you and then you block them. And it doesn't do it for all the other hosts on your network. So CrowdSec really makes it like a massively multiplayer firewall because whenever you block someone, it forwards it up to their cloud and they do some magic to decide if that block goes out to everyone else. Additionally, you can have your own private cluster so all your servers have just one decision making. So if someone tries to brute force or run GoBust on your web, they immediately get blocked on like your VPN server. So I think that's really cool. The other cool thing that we'll do at the end of this video is instead of blocking someone, forward them to somewhere else. So someone's going to brute force our first web server, they get blocked there. And then when they try to SSH to a second web server, it's going to automatically just forward them straight to a honeypot so that attacker doesn't even see that SSH host key changing. It's super sneaky, a great way to do honeypots. I love it, so let's just jump in. So to start things off, we have three different web servers and I use DigitalOcean. So every single web server has a routable IP address. And then I have these two attacking servers, which I'm gonna use to test the web server's banning ability. And then at the very end of the video, I'm gonna configure uh, web server three and two to report everything to one. So if someone attacks web server one, um, all the other web servers get the list immediately, or if someone attacks web server 03, then um, web 02 and one will automatically block that. Now, based upon the intro of the video, you may be thinking, well, if someone attacks a CrowdSec host, doesn't everyone also like get all those lists immediately? Well, the answer is no. And my understanding is it's to prevent one bad agent from being able to taint the whole well of IP addresses. So multiple um, CrowdSec agents have to report an IP as malicious before it gets added to the global list to push to everyone. So having like the mini centralized network of CrowdSec agents will let me uh, push rules out immediately. So um, in order to install it, we can go to the website and if you scroll down, you can read exactly how it works, but they do have install instructions for various OSs. I have a Ubuntu. So the first one is run this curl command. We could take a look at exactly what the script does, but it's just going to add the CrowdSec repository. So um, we can just run this with the pipe bash. I wouldn't recommend doing this without vetting the script yourself, but it's coming from their website, so chances are it is safe. I've already installed the agent on Web02, Web03, because once you see the process once, you don't have to see it three times. So now we can see the repository is set up. We can install packages, and all we do is do a apt git install crowdsec. And currently there's a weird um, bug where you won't get definitions immediately. And it should also be noted, this isn't gonna put it in any type of blocking mode immediately. We have to install the bouncer for it to actually interact with IP tables. So right now it's just in like a detection mode because we just installed it. The bouncer is not installed, so it doesn't go and block things. But um, if I went to uh, Web03, I do CS for um, CrowdSec and then CLI for command line interface. We can do dash H and see everything. Uh, decisions is gonna be listing all the decisions this agent did. If I do a list, we can see um, it's already blocked two different hosts. I'm gonna pipe this to less capital S to prevent line wrapping so we get a bit prettier of output. But we can see these two IPs have already tried to brute force this agent. And it didn't actually block them because the bouncer is not installed. But you can see these were banned because of this exact thing. If I do a dash A on this list, it's going to list every IP that is banned and the reason. So we can see lots of banned just because of SSH, right? And I'm kind of curious if it's only SSH because this one only has SSH installed. So if I grep dash V SSH, uh, we don't really get anything, do we? Did that show anything? Let's see. Come on. I don't think so. Um, that's weird. Now, I guess the formatting was slightly off, but I'm going to run that same command on web02. 
because WebO2 has also been running for that hour and a half. So it's pulled all these um, decisions. And WebO2, this one has either Nginx or Apache installed. So we can see we have a bunch of IP addresses that are also now blocked because of various attacks. So we can see uh, this IP got blocked from someone because they were doing a spring for shell scan. This one has a bad user agent. Um, like this is doing a log for J. So you can see all these IPs that if I had the bouncer installed would no longer be able to access my web server just because they're blocked, right? Uh, we got HTTP open proxies, probing, uh, some CVEs. And it should be important to note that the CrowdSec doesn't install any like Apache or Nginx modules. It's doing it purely based upon log analysis. So if you want a true like web application firewall to prevent these type of attacks, um, look into like mod security, the core rule set. Um, the best place is CRS mod security on GitHub and that will pull it up. Eventually I will have a video going over this, but not right now. Um, maybe by the time you watch this, I do, but at the time of recording, I do not. Um, so now that we have like a list of decisions, we should be able to do it here. But again, if I do sudo cscli decisions dash a uh, list, we need list. There's no active decisions because again, it hasn't had that hour and a half to actually populate. And no one's actually attacked this server yet. So if I do a curl if config.co so I can get this IP address, let's go and attack this guy, right? I'm gonna hop over to my attacking web server and run crack map exec SSH. Uh, we'll do the user of root and the password. I'm just gonna give it common.txt. So just a standard word list. We should hopefully see this connect to my host and it won't actually block. Um, come on. Maybe crack map's not working. Let's do SSH 157, 230, 54, 205. Oh, I probably have it in public key mode only. So let me v etsy SSH, sshd.config, and we have to allow password authentication. So let's allow this service SSHD restart. And then now I should be able to attempt to log in. So let's do one, two, three. We did three logins. I'm gonna look at decisions. We don't have any yet. So I'm going to do three more. One, two, I think it's five it actually blocks on. Maybe not, three. There we go. So on the sixth login, we can see that IP address would have been blocked. Um, I'm not banned. You can see I'm still able to try to log in, and that's because the bouncer is not installed. So let's go and install the bouncer. So I'm going to Google CrowdSec bouncer, and this should get me to documentation. It's just a simple apt install. Yeah. So we're using IP tables. If you use NF tables, you have the bouncer instructions there. So we're just going to install this and probably just have to restart it. I'm not exactly positive. Um, if we try to log in, do this SSH. Oh, it's already blocking. So I can't even get to this port now, right? Um, because um, the block list is in. If I do a look at IP tables dash L, we can see how this works. So we got a input chain on, on input. We are dropping packets that match this IP or the CrowdSec blacklist source. And this is using something called IP set. So let's see, how do we do this? IP set is just this. Is it list? There we go. So if we do add IP set list crowdsec dash blacklist, we can see all the IPs that are part of it. So if I am able to do this SSH brute force here, 
Um, I'm not sure why crack map exec is not working on this, but we can just kill it and SSH the good old fashioned way. 157, 230, 54, 205. Yes, we try to log in and we're gonna do six times to make sure this gets applied. One, come on, two, and now I should be blocked. So if I look at IP set again, I was figuring we'd have two, but I still only see, okay, there we go. There's that second one. So two different IP members of this. So now both these boxes are blocked. Um, we can look at the actual configuration. I think it's blocked for 10 minutes by default. Um, I'm sure this timeout tells us, let's see. Uh, those are seconds, right? That looks like seconds. So let's just Google this seconds two minutes and see how long this is. Uh, 237 minutes it will expire in. So 237 minutes to hours. Is that like four hours? Yeah, about four hours. So if we want to, we can see all the rules that are applied. So let's do CSCLI and do dash H again so we can see help. And we want to look at collections. And then next we're gonna look at scenarios. But if I do collections list, we can see all the collections that are applied to the server. We have Linux, base HTTP scenarios, SSHD, HTTP CVE, and Nginx. If we look at one of these collections, we can see it's applying various scenarios in this. So the SSH one applies SSH brute force and SSH slow brute force. So if we want to look at scenarios, Oh, it also has the parser, so it's parsing SSHD logs. But um, let's look at scenarios. We can do list, and I want to look for SSH. So this just gives me the full path. We can see what this looks like. And at a quick glance, we can see basically how these things work. It's YAML, so it's not that hard to understand just glancing at it. Um, the in-depth, I don't even know exactly how it works because I haven't looked at the application that much in depth. I'm just doing these basic things and kind of showing what I did on my Twitch stream. So we have this type is equal to leaky. And if I Google CrowdSec leaky docs, pulls up the page and we can see there are three different types, leaky, trigger, and counter. And leaky, it says a leaky bucket that must be configured with capacity and leak speed. Trigger is a bucket that is overflowed as soon as it is poured. And counter only like overflows after a duration. So it's useful to count things. Don't really understand what this one is. I don't see any examples using it. But trigger would be like, if this ever happens in a web app, then block them because that's bad. And leaky is like, if this happens X number of times. Um, the concept of a bucket is a bit like strange to me but it does make sense. So every event that goes into a bucket um, just stays there. And when the bucket gets full, that's when it blocks someone. So if we look at this SSH, we can see the bucket's capacity is five. So if there are five events that are grouped by the source IP in this bucket, then it's going to be maxed out. And on the sixth one, the bucket overflows, spills, and that's when the block occurs. So. That's essentially the um, scenario at a high level to my understanding. Uh, what we probably want to do now, I'm trying to think, um, probably install the bouncer everywhere. So if we do the apt install bouncer, I can put it on the other two boxes. And we can also show it working on like a directory brute force, right? So, this box, the web02, does not have, um, or does have the scenario installed for Apache, right? Scenarios list, uh, not scenario, what is it, collection? Yeah, so we have Apache installed here. So I'm going to do a CSCLI decisions 
list or a decision is it decisions did i mean this yes i did mean that right this is what i want i hope no active decisions awesome so i'm going to get the ip address we have this and i'm going to run go buster so dot slash go buster dir mode dash u uh, we have to give http dash w for word list common dot text and we see go busters all well wait common dot text we have a lot more files there right yeah we're blocked <laughs> so if i go to the decisions because of those 404s we have been blocked uh, HTTP crawl non-statistics. So if I look for this scenario, we can see exactly what it looks like. So if I do scenarios list grep for this, it's going to be in this scenarios directory. We can see detect aggressive crawl from a single IP. I was hoping if I do it in Vim, is it syntax highlighted? It is. It's a bit easier for me to read. Let's see, access log is equal to false. I was trying to figure out how it identifies if it's not like Google or something like that, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but we can see aggressive crawl from a single IP. And it's looking at the access log or the error log. So now that person is just blocked from accessing my box. Now, again, the whole like it hasn't been blocked from everywhere because if i go on this attack box i can still ssh to this guy uh, we have to probably enable the um ssh shd config we want to key where is it um password change this to yes there we go and we have to restart SSH. So now if I attack it, we should be fine. Yeah, so I'm not blocked yet because all these agents aren't reporting to one. So let's go install the dashboard on Web01 and then we can take a look at it. So I'm gonna Google uh, CrowdSec install dashboard. Probably go to the very first one. And let's see. We want to run this dashboard setup. Uh, cannot. Oh, we have to install Docker first. So let's do Docker install Ubuntu because this has its own way to do it. You normally don't want to install it off of apt. You want to um, use their instructions to install it. So install that, then add the GPG key. And then finally, well, not finally, we have to add the repository and run an update. And after this update, we should be able to install Docker. So that may take a second. Try and think what else we want to do. Um, what we're going to do in the future is take this IP tables rule, change it from a drop and forward it elsewhere. So we're gonna forward it to a honeypot. But I wanna get all these servers configured first because um, I want to attack Web01 and then have Web03 forward that attacker's IP straight to the honeypot. So um, I'll say why that's cool once we get this working. So now that we have Docker, I wonder if I had to start the service or it's already started. I'm not positive. Um, let's do this dashboard setup. Yes, that is fine. Awesome. So now it is going to be installing this dashboard. And the dashboard is actually pretty cool. Um, I'm going to just fast forward this video until this whole pulling the Docker image is done. And there we go. The dashboard is now installed. 
I'm going to forward this port, so port 3000, to myself. Uh, already in use. Let's do dash L 3000. I'll do 3001, localhost 3000. There we go. So what I'm doing there, if the very first thing you type on the SSH line is that squiggly C, it goes into that prompt. So now I should have port 3001 listed on listening on my local host, and that should go to this port 3000. So I'm going to do localhost 3001. This looks good because I see metabase. Log in with the username. Do the random password. And let's see, do we have, does dark mode work well with this? Looks like it does. So this is the actual dashboard. So I can look at the decision list. We can see um, the ones that my uh, agent used, and it's blocking the two attacker IPs. I don't know if I can delete them from here. Um, edit dashboard, revision, duplicate. Doesn't look like I can. We could look at the alert history, see what that is. Um, what else do we have? We have the main dashboard that shows some pretty graphs. And this will be probably a lot better when we have multiple host up, right? Um, so let's go and delete a decision. So if I do CLC, uh, CSCLI decisions, then we can do list to list them. Then I could do delete dash H and we can delete it by IP, ID, range, things like that. So first let's do dash I for IP. I'm going to delete this one. So if I delete that and now we do a decisions list, there's only one. So one of those things have been deleted. I go to the dashboard, we can see that decision is no longer active, so it's hidden, right? Um, and if I go here, let's see, let's do the if config, grab this IP. One of these boxes can now SSH to this guy. So that one can, this one cannot. So let's go and delete that decision, but we're going to do it based upon ID. So decisions list, let's do delete dash dash ID two. So that decision has been deleted. If I go here, I should be able to, yes I can, SSH. So that is that piece of deleting decisions. Um, let's do something I haven't actually done before and have web two and three pull decisions from web one. So for this, I'm gonna do crowdsec multi-host and see if I can find the blog post I was reading before doing this. Here we go. They do have really good documentation, blogs for a lot of things. So it's going to talk about deploying it in a multi-server setup. So I guess we're testing their documentation now if I can do this first try. So both server two and three are meant to host services. Take a look at the hub. So these are hosting, two and three. And one, I guess, is going to be the main one. So let's see, install CrowdSec, we did. I'm not going to do Postgres. I bet if we had many things, we'd want to. Um, but I think if you just have one, hopefully it uses like SQLite or something. So first we have to configure CrowdSec on server one to accept connection from two and three. Please make sure your firewall allows connection to two and three and port 80. So let's configure the API server. So we edit this YAML file. And let's see, what do we do? Does it tell us? I'm guessing we have to look at server right here. So the client is skip verify false, credentials path, that's fine. The listen URL is probably what we have to change. So I'm gonna put this on all interfaces. Um, if you had like an internal interface, it would be much better to do that so you're not listening on the um, like port 8080 to the world. I'm not sure what security implications this is. You probably should use file uh, IP tables and stuff to block unauthorized things from accessing port 8080. So profiles path, do we have one? We do. 
And then credentials path, we have that as well. Okay. So that looks good. Let's do a service. Uh, wait, it was two files, local API credentials. So we have a login and a password. Okay. We want to change the configured IP and then restart. So let's see, let's do it if config real quick. I guess we can edit this to change the IP. Did this say change it to HTTPS? So we still just HTTP. Looks like HTTP. Restart CrowdSec. And as long as this restarts, hopefully we get things. Okay. And now we want to register. So let's do that here. So if I do this, and we say HTTP like this, port 8080. What did this say? Successfully registered a local API. Credentials dump there. Reload. So let's try that same command we did on the next host. So copy this. Paste that there. Okay. Okay, to achieve this, we need to tweak the agent file. So now edit this. Let's see, CrowdSec service was not there. See, CD Etsy, find dot grep CrowdSec. Where did you get deployed? Looks like it's in multi-user target once on my service. Okay. Add the net, no API parameter to agent invoking. So on the exec start, we add this. Okay. And I'm going to copy this whole path. Do it on the next guy. Uh, what? Oh, we have to do slash Etsy. There we go. Exec start. And it's dash no dash API. I hope it's not dash dash no dash API. I only see one dash. And then we reload and restart. Okay. Last thing to do is allow server two and three on server one. So if I do machines list up here, we can see this one is allowed. This is going to be my own host. I think if I do a if config.co, this IP does match. But these two are disabled. So we could enable those. So how do we do that? We do validate. So validate this guy and we'll validate the other guy. Okay. And then restart. Just going to restart it everywhere, but I'm going to let the one finish restarting before I restart the other ones. And so set up mitigation. It looks like it wants us to run this command on our main server to add the two web servers. So let's try this real quick. So on our master, which is one, I'm going to run this and I'll call it web02. And then we will do one for web dash o3 okay and where do we put these configs so this is installing the bouncer which we've done so it wants it in this yaml file so if i do a vi here 
I guess that file doesn't exist anymore. So we can do a find Etsy grep for bounce and edit the configuration file here with the new API key. So we have an API key here. Let's put in the new configuration. Um, I wonder if it automatically did this and I didn't have to do this step anymore because obviously the um, like applications changed a little bit. So I'm not going to do 03. Um, we're just going to do 02 and see if 03 works the same way 02 does. If it does, then the step I just did here is redundant at this point. But we'll see if the registration automatically does this. Um, because we should have an API key here. This one, yeah, is not the same. So let's restart the bouncer. So service, crowdsec, firewall, bouncer, restart. And now, hopefully, everything has the same, like, decision list. So CLS, CLI, decisions, dash L, or list, dash A. Or not dash A, I just want dash L. Um, well, not dash L. No arguments. Okay, we only have one blocked. I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to run it on the other ones to see what their decisions look like. They may be slightly different because, nope, they're not. So we have the same thing. We can see the band time is pretty much the same here. Different seconds because, again, I did not run the commands all at the same time. But the 14247 box is blacklisted from everywhere. So let's clear this. I'm going to do a um, if config again on these to get the IPs. And we'll try to SSH to this guy. So SSH, this, looks like we can. So this is not the blacklisted one. Uh, this is not, both these aren't. Um, decisions list, 14247. Is that just a, no, that should be this guy. I should be blocked. Weird. Um, Let's see if I'm blocked on this host. Maybe Bouncer isn't properly configured up here. SSH. So I think something is wrong or maybe because it's an old block and didn't replicate. So I'm going to delete the decisions real quick. So decisions list, let's do delete dash dash ID one. So now if I do a decisions anywhere, no active decisions, that's good. So let's get ourselves blocked. So we have to do three login, uh, six login attempts. So there's three. Let's do some more. One, two, and this last one should block us. So we should be blocked at this point. Okay. Blocked here. And okay. Decisions have been updated everywhere. If I try SSHing to this guy, I can't. So I know I was successfully blocked. Um, we can also just do NC for netcat 22. Uh, we want to do ZV to see if a port is open. If I did that on port 80, oh, I can't because I am blocked. So um, if we run the same command on a host that is not blocked, this attack2 guy, we can see succeeded. So let's try a different IP. So if I do an if config, we have it down here. So let's do this IP. And I succeeded. I did not expect that. So we have incorrectly configured the bouncer here because um, I'd assume this would be blocked, but it doesn't look like it. Um, Web03, let's try this guy real quick. Uh, if config, this is the one we did not change an API key to. 
So let's try this. So this guy is also fine. Bizarre. Um, let's see. Web02. Did I do it lowercase? Um, API. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, I did not save that API key. So my tmux history went away, I think. So I'll probably have to regenerate the API key. Um, but this is confusing. I wonder if I have to change the user somewhere. There's no user. There's just API URL and API. So I thought I would be able to pull this. I wonder if this only pulls like every few minutes. Let's see. IP set. Oh no, we want to. Uh, what is it? IP tables dash L dash N. Oh, there's no IP. There's no drop rule. IP tables dash L dash N. Where is input? So that may be why. IP set list. So if I do an IP set, is this going to list things? Does not exist. So something is wrong with the bouncer. Because I would think I have something here. Um, let's see. Service. Uh, let's do system CTL status, crowdsec, firewall, bouncer. And it's loaded but inactive. Start. Status. So I think something is bad with a bouncer because it keeps dying. <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I'm going to pause the video, do some light troubleshooting, and we'll figure it out. So almost immediately, I realized the mistake. Um, I was looking at the logs. So if I do a tail on var log crowdsec firewall bouncer, we can see it's doing a get on 127.0.0.1.80.80 and getting connection of fused. So when I updated the API key, um, I did not update... Uh, the URL. So we have to tell it to go to this guy. So if I do a, what is it, um, if config, there we go. Copy this IP, put this here. Now we restart the bouncer. So let's do restart here. Hopefully when I do a status, it is active running. That is good. If I do IP set, Hey, now it looks like it's better. Um, IP tables dash capital L dash N. We see that drop rule in place. So that being said, now I should be blocked from accessing this guy, right? SSH, or we can just do netcat. Do this. And hey, we are blocked. So what I'm going to do is go unblock me from 02 from 01. So decision list, we can do, um, is that really like a, yeah, one, two, eight, three, six. So decisions, delete, dash, dash, ID, one, two, eight, three, six. So now I deleted that rule. I'm going to try to access this guy, right? 139, yep. And I can. So this seems to be working between these two. Now, this third one, um, I don't think is working because we did not do the API correctly. So let me just not update this key real quick and point it to uh, this guy. So if config, there's no way this works. This API key is probably meant for its local host one. So we still have to go and add it. Um, so let's do a restart on the bouncer. Uh, that's the CrowdSec service. Um, we want the bouncer. 
firewall mounts a service. Sure. Okay, now it's restarting. So if I tail, ver log, crowdsec, firewall bouncer, let's see, did it log in? API error, access is forbidden because we did not update that API key. So there's one thing I wanna do real quick. I wanna see if I can pull the API key we have. So I'm going to cd etsy crowdsec, I'm gonna grep dash r, bd413, and that doesn't exist in any files. So I'm guessing we'll have to regenerate this API key. So um, if we go here, what was that command we ran? Yeah, uh, you would not be able to retrieve it. So whoops, uh, server dash three. Okay, uh, it won't be web03, this one be server dash three. Wonder if I call this web dash o3. So we can't have duplicates there. I'm guessing I did capitals or something like that. Uh, let's see. But if this video is a hit, maybe we'll go more into managing the API and finding out how to delete them. Well, I'm guessing we can do bouncers list and probably delete this way. So um, delete dash H, my bouncer name. So we can probably web dash O3. Oh, look at that. We can easily delete them and regenerate that way. Look at me. I uh, don't even have to wait and do a second video um, off screen because that was super simple. It's nice when like application interfaces are intuitive. So let's go back into this config and I'm going to put the new API key and we can restart the bouncer service. And now blocking at one place is gonna block everywhere, which is going to be amazing. So I can look at decisions list. Uh, no active. Oh yeah, because um, I had deleted it. So if we go to this attack, let's run SSH again. We're gonna brute force, let's brute force Web03, the new one we just added. Um, actually, let's do Web02, we know this one's working. <laughs> so let's do this if config again, uh, go here, go to the attack, Let's SSH, yes, uh, person denied, V, Etsy, SSHD, or SSH, SHD, password, yes, service, SSHD, restart. There we go. So let's get blocked from attack. Let's do three here. I'm actually curious. So I just did three on ATK01. Let's do three on this next guy. So if we distribute these out, is this decision going to like play about? So if someone does a failed login once across all my servers, is that gonna block? No, it does not look like it. So let's go back to attack O2 and put another bad few attempts. And I'm actually gonna go back to attack one because it is a 10 second thing. So maybe me grabbing the IP changed something. So it looks like I am blocked now from O1. Uh, if I do decisions list, I am blocked. So if I can check, can we get to the other one still? So 157, I can't. I can't get to two. And let's do another one. Can I get here? So let's check this. This one I can. I think. 
think. If config 139. Is that what I was just doing? Oh no. I probably just like did something stupid like trying to get into the attack from the attack. Probably. But yeah, I am blocked everywhere. So let's delete this decision real quick. I'm going to block it via web and see if web will affect the other ones because this guy, three, does not have a web server. Two has Apache. This guy's Nginx. So the decision is going to be blocking based upon an Nginx rule. And I want to see if that populates everywhere. Okay, decision is deleted. So let's go to the Go Buster. And that's got the wrong IP. So let's add it to this IP. So now it's like immediately finishing. Um, I want to say it's blocked. Let's do decisions list. Yeah, it is blocked. So let's look at decisions here. Do I have it blocked? I do. Decisions. Well, it says it's blocked because of HTTP crawl. So now if I try to SSH to any of these, it is going to be blocked. So that is awesome. Just by go bustering, I've completely blocked it. Um, now let's delete this decision and then do one more thing before we get to the really cool part that I'm excited about. So I want to look at the active thing. So if I refresh this, we don't have any active decisions, right? It's pulling it up. I don't think it does. Oh, it probably does because of um, all the decisions now. Let's see. What's a good way to do this? So before when I ran the dashboard, it probably did not hit that like hour and a half mark where it was only showing um, my things because now we have plenty of others. So CrowdSec value, wonder, edit dashboard, sharing, auto refresh, revision history, Let's see, origin. I wish I could like right click and filter out an origin because I don't want CAPI. I think there is our data, alert history, there was some like write SQL. Okay. Learn about your data. Alerts, decisions. Select star from decisions. Click run. Okay. So this is good. And what we want, Let's see, origin. Okay, so we have all these from CAPI, so let's remove that. So where origin is not CAPI. Does this work? Awesome, now all the origins are going to be CrowdSec. So this is a good way to show filters. So let's do if config, go here. Let's brute force this guy. Um, am I still blocked? Decisions. List. I think I am. Delete dash dash IP. There we go. May take a second. Oh wait, that was the wrong IP. Um, curl, I wanna delete this IP, 157. Delete IP, this guy. There we go, now I can. So let's get blocked. 
and I am going to 68, so I'm going to this guy, Web02. I'm just curious if on the dashboard I can easily see um, which service is blocking it, right? So we got another couple. Nope, it looks like it's blocked now. So if I rerun this query, see origin crowd sec. SSH brute force. This one is probably me. That's the latest ID. I don't see it saying web. So I wonder if we look at alerts. What does this table look like? If we click on alerts, Oh wow, this is much bigger. Um, select star from alerts. SSH brute force, IP, six events. Events count six. Scenario hash. I don't see anything about the sensor. I'm sure there's a way, but maybe it's not all that important. Source IP, that's the one that we blocked. But uh, we can see like the events, like the leak speed, scenario version, things like that, but not exactly sure how to see um, which sensor it was that blocked. But some pretty cool graphs. So the last piece we want to do is the fun piece, and that is the honeypot to forward someone's uh, traffic. So what's going to happen is we're going to do an SSH brute force from the attack guy onto this guy. So I'm going to block SSH, and that's going to communicate it down to these guys. And then on web02, this guy is going to be configured. Instead of blocking SSH, he's going to SSH forward it over to this guy. And this guy is going to be running a honeypot called Kauri, which used to be called Kippo. I still refer to it as Kippo a lot, but it's really Kauri. So that's going to be the entire um, logic. So let's start off by um, enabling IP forwarding on Web02. So sysctl-w net.ipv4.ip underscore forward is equal to one. So this enables IP forwarding here. And then I'm going to um, write the IP tables rules I'm going to craft in this uh, file because it's going to be a bit easier for people to understand, I believe because we use a lot of flags here. So we specify the NAT table pre-routing chain and the protocol TCP, and we're going to match the set. Um, let's see, IP tables dash capital S. Uh, we can do it here, IP tables S. Um, all these chains are because of Docker being installed. So we're just mimicking exactly what this does. So I have match set here and it's going to copy this. So I think that is right. Okay, and then we also want to match on TCP for destination port 22. I don't know why it started highlighting everything, but oh well. So now we can do dash J DNAT and then to destination and then this IP address which is 157, like this, on port 2222. So with that set, we can set a masquerade rule up. So IP tables dash T nat dash M set match set uh, crowd sec blacklist source. And I should have done it like this. And we need... Um, dash a, this is on the post routing rule. 
And let's see. I think we can match destination port 22. And then do a dash J masquerade. So I think this is what we want to do. Um, let's just flush the IP tables. And if I do IP tables dash L, we have no rules, so it's not blocking or anything. Um, and then let me run this. Invalid argument, run D message. What? IP tables TCP match only valid for protocol six. Um, specify TCP there. There we go. So IP tables dash T nat dash L. Um, I'm going to flush it again because we put it in twice because the first command finished completely uh, successfully. Shoot. There we go. Dash L. So now we should have it. And I'm doing it this way first. I flush the whole table because I'm not positive if I do this pre-routing thing, if a block on input is going to stop things. So that's why I did it this way. So now if I do nclvnp on port 2222 and I do a curl if config, actually we want to go on this guy. So if I go over to my attacking box, attacker one is blocked, attacking two is not. So I'm going to netcat on port 22. We see we get that SSH banner, um, no connection over here on web three. I'm going to try it on attack one, which I believe this guy is still blocked. And I don't get anything. And I did not receive anything. So it did not forward correctly. So dash T nat. Let's see. Let's flush this. VIP tables. I'm going to take out that destination port. And let's get rid of PTCP. Let's just do match set on IP. Okay, let's run this. Listen on attacking, connect. There we go. So it's something to do with um, how I had all those extra matches on my post routing rule. But we can see we connected here and we sent data back. I'm going to start netcat back up. We go down here because this guy is not in the database. He is not being forwarded. So if I instead do a brute force on this, um, My whole TTY is weird, but I think that is set up correctly. So after six times, we should go over into the other box, right? So let's try a second SSH. So one, two, three, and now the next SSH, we should get to web03. So if I do this SSH connection, we see Web03 has got it. So we have set up forwarding correctly. So now all we have to do is install Kippo on that guy. So let's go over to here. All right, Kippo, uh, Cowrie. Cowrie install. Installing in seven steps. So let us run all the dependencies. So sudo apt, it wants Python virtual env. Let's do Python 3, virtual environment, and install all this. And now let us do the next step, which wants us to add the user Kauri, uh, enter the defaults for everything. We can switch to them. Then we want to download the code, go into the directory, Set up the virtual environment. Okay. Created. Let's do a source to source it. 
And then we want to install the configuration file. So if we do CD Etsy, I'm just going to move calorie cfg.dst over here. And I think if I change user DB, just to user DB, that works. And usernames, let's see. So start is for any username or password. Exclamation point at the start of password would not grant access. Slash can be used. Would not grant this password access. So I'm going to get rid of this star star. We don't want that. Um, some password we don't want. So let's do that. And root x. I'm going to call this please subscribe. So the password please subscribe should match for root. Um, we can probably delete all these entries. Okay. Let's look at the user, actually not user DB, the calorie config, um, user DB. Wonder if I did that correctly, because I don't see it in the config. Um, I just want to make sure SSH is enabled. If we look for SSH, enabled is true, so that should be fine. Um, I think this is going to be the basic setup, and it's not going to be an in-depth video of calorie. We're just kind of showing the potential here. So if I bin calorie start, twisted not found. Uh-oh. Um, pip3 install twisted. I wonder if there's a typo. Because it was, it didn't have a E. Unknown command calorie. Uh, we missed something. <laughs> There's, let's see. I probably didn't do this pip install. So let's do this upgrade pip. And hopefully we did not screw up a virtual environment by running that one command. But let's install this. Is that a step that I just missed? Oh, um, yeah, I just skipped over that. So now we can start it. I did not get an error message. Looking at it, we have twisted listening on quad twos. So I think we are good. So if I go over to my attack and we SSH or we do NC, uh, we have this Debian. And I want to say before, let's see, NC, it was saying Ubuntu. So this is definitely now going over into the honeypot. So let's SSH this guy. Let's do root at the host key has failed, right? So this is what would have happened if um, like we previously connected to this guy, right? The host key fails and we're like, oh God, um, we got now directed to a honeypot. So let's just SSH, yes, root. I'm gonna put something. So any password is working. Um, that shouldn't be the case. Root doesn't work. Please subscribe. That logs in. Uh, we can do ls, who am I, echo, please subscribe. If you want to see the really cool thing, um, we can play back that log if you're not familiar with it. So all the login attempts go in like uh, var, what is it? Log, calorie, calorie.log, grep-i, PLE. Is it JSON? Let's see, root. Oh, I'm doing ls, cat. Uh, let's do the log. So we can see the login attempts. If I just grab login attempt, we can see all the credentials they are trying. Um, grep. So we can see those. I don't know why that ASD succeeded. Um, I wonder if I just don't have the right database. But this isn't a video of Calorie. We just are showing it working. So let's delete all decisions real quick. So let's do decisions list. And I'm going to delete dash dash IP. And we're going to delete both of our attackers. Right. So we delete that. And delete this. 
So, let's do a curl here. And I'm going to delete my known host file. So let's exit this. RM SSH, known host. So, what's going to happen? Actually, I want to restart the firewall here. Uh, that's not it. System, CTL, restart, CrowdSec, firewall bouncer. Because this puts a block back in our input, right? If I do dash T NAT as well, um, we can see the pre-routing rule exists. Uh, my input, wait, what? Status, is that not running? It is. Stop. Start. IP tables dash L. Okay. Dash T NAT. So I guess when I add the T NAT, it's not going to show me my input rules. Is there all? That's weird. Because I can see input. I wonder if NAT has separate input rules. Oh well. Um, but we can see we're matching on the pre routing forwarding, and we are also dropping as well. So now that we have that set, and that was probably the most confusing part of this video because I'm so baffled by that, but SSH to this, we're going to block ourselves. So get a few more requests. So we got to do six different ones. Okay. And after we get blocked from this guy, we're not even going to be able to identify that we're blocked from the second guy, right? Okay, all that is done. Yes, I did delete the known host before. I did not hit enter, so a known host file is still there, but I am now blocking this. So if I do decisions, we can list. I am now blocking that attacker. So if we go over here, we got this, and I'm going to SSH over to this guy, and we're going to accept the key, and hopefully this is our honeypot. So log in, and we are. We're now in our honeypot. Even though we are logging into this guy, the attacker has no idea we forward him to our honeypot, which is amazing. Like That's my favorite thing. The biggest issue I have Whenever you do these type of honeypots on SSH, like on fail to ban, like you're SSHing in, the um, key changes on you. And you're like, wait, um, why the key change? I know now you're sending me somewhere else after X numbers. But what this tool allows us to do is fail to ban here, and then this guy picks up the rule and forwards them to the honeypot. And um, yeah, it's really cool. Um, so, Echo, thanks for watching. And what we're going to do now to end this video is a playback log of that honeypot session because I don't think I showed that. So let's do, um, we showed the logs of like guessing credentials, right? But Calry also has this um, var, I think lib, Calry, TTY. Yeah, we have these files. So LA, um, this is the most recent one, I believe. So let's look at this. So if I do bin play log, and then we go var lib calorie tty, paste that file. Uh, I think I added that h. I don't know how I added it, but I did. We can see exactly what the attacker is doing in like real time. So there was the lsla. We are waiting for a little bit. Uh, go up a directory, and um, here we have it. Um, you can hear I'm not typing anything. That's just it playing back the log. So um, maybe the next time we'll take a deep dive into honeypots. But for now, um, take care, guys, and I'll see you all next time.